everybody so I am here with Joy Has Questions and tonight I am discussing Amina Moth and Tara Wallace now I know you all are probably like girl that show was two days ago we are trying to finish catching up with the ratchetry of Black and Crew and you know what we can actually combine everything together just because when I think about that show Black and Crew anything that's on VH1 programming like women on this channel look like shit even when it's a televised show like hit the floor you're just like oh lord stop being crazy for one goddamn second and I just find it disheartening because yeah there is space to be the vixen like I'm not one for slut shaming or women shaming. I'm not the person that's like, oh, you have to, you know, wear a scarlet letter A on your clothes or you're a whore. Girl, if you want a deep sea dive on whatever it is, go ahead. Go for yours. But what I find is so crazy is the desperation that I see on a lot of the women on these shows. Case in point, like I watched a clip of Amina talk to Peter in a very like desperate and like no self-esteem manner now for example if you were telling a guy I know I could be with you if I wanted you if I wanted to have you I could have you I don't want you there's a difference see how like my tone was more of an area it's more of like if I wanted you it would have been happened if I wanted to make this work I would have tried I would have gone to counseling I would have been beloved on y'all let's fix my life we'd have done all that shit but you see the difference between that and then the way she was saying was like I mean, I could come back to you, Peter, if you wanted me to come back to you. It sounds like like when a crackhead goes, I mean, we can smoke if you want to smoke. Or like that friend who is always, you know, bumming rides, but they try and make it seem like, well, I mean, if you really want to give me a ride, I'll get it. We're like, bitch, you know I don't want to give you a ride. I'm doing it for like the bare minimum of, you know, the good points I need to get into heaven. So at the end of the day, looking at Amina in this nail shop still be on some I'm a strong woman because I moved to LA and whatever it is that you want to say aren't you the same girl that's writing a book called the other woman the wife like you are literally the world's first side chick wife and the fact that this is even a thing or that we even you know sensationalize this or put this on national TV or have been talking about this same storyline for the past 30 years is ridiculous and pathetic and really really sad but here we are and then every time you see Tara she is still you know talking about like oh I'm a strong woman and being in your goddess space every time I look at her I'm like that type of betrayal is the type of betrayal well even if he finally sincerely apologizes the answer is still no like, that type of behavior is completely unequivoc unequivocally, like, reprehensible. There's no coming back from that. You do not get to sit here and embarrass me and betray me like that and then think that you will ever have a chance. That's what that type of error does. Not you going, what well, you, makes you think that you have the right to, like, just drop back in my life like this again. But you're going to be okay with him just dropping back in your life again. Because you've done it season after season. You didn't sit here and be like, you know what, thank you. I really needed to hear that from you. Continue to be an amazing father to your sons. I implore and I beg and I hope that you finally go and get the therapy and the counseling that you need to fix your own broken spirit. But we are as done as Yandy style is trying to regrow her edges. It's never happening again. It's never coming back. Like we're just not doing it anymore. And she never says that. So you see, I see two women basically on both ends of the spectrum, equally weak, equally lacking self-esteem, uh, self -esteem, but yet trying to like pull from or make it seem like they're, you know, strong and I just happened to fall in love. Amina, you were dumb by choosing to be dumb. Well, he never said he had a wife. Did you ever ask? Did you ever use common sense? Did you ever try and act like, you know, smarter than Helen Keller in the sense of, hey, maybe I need to do my due diligence. Has he living in a house with somebody, got kids with somebody, but they ain't together? 
she was dumb because she wanted to be dumb and Tara wanted to be, you know, petty and not let it go because she didn't respect the relationship to begin with, which is also the wrong mentality to have. And also, the fact that I have not watched this show since Chrissy was on it and I still know all the inner workings of their stupidity is something that's the bigger thing for me. Like... Even if you try and escape this type of content or the fact that it has absolutely no positive effect on the African American community or on minority communities, period, because you got a couple of Dominicans on the show and a Puerto Rican girl. But I'm like, the women are just reflected so badly. I see men on there that are more into, I, th I have seen literally clips of Rich Dollars and, and Dirty Feet, Pistol Pete, and Cisco the Dragon, or rather Dragon Tails, whatever that clown's name is, they got more emotional over their own broken relationship than the women that they have dogged and disrespected on this show and passed around like a spliff. Like, this is crazy to me. Just so, so crazy. Like, I'm not settling into, you know, oh, normalizing what else is going on in the world. I know there's other issues, but... If I'm looking at reality TV, number one, I would like it to actually have some reality. And then number two, I want the reality to be something at the end that uplifts me. I don't need the inner workings of your trash ass life. Like, I can just, you know, walk out doors and go to like 63rd and College Cottage and see some people struggling if that's what I wanted. Like, I don't have to tune in and give you advertising dollars every Monday night. So that's a no for me thing. And all the shows do it. Black Ink Chicago, the only girl on there who actually is doing something based on her profession, Cat Girl. Black Ink Crew New York, as annoying as she is, Duchess is the only one doing something with her career. Young Bay, whoever that new, the new um, Asian tattoo artist. Mel, I do like Mel. That, yeah, Black Ink Crew is like the only show that I'm like, yes, I still watch it faithfully. Um... But that's just something that's just really been on my spirit. Like, it's Wednesday. This show came on Monday and literally a smooth 72 hours later. And I'm still just like, why? Like, why is this still a thing? Why are y'all double dutching in and out in terms of competing to see who's going to have kids last? Like, Oh, Lord, help us, help us. And then we just going to give them 50 endorsements and hopefully get them a blue check mark on Instagram so they can be like, look, mama, I made it. And get them hooked up with a really great graphic designer who can do their club promo promotion so they can come through and do brunch and tell their story of how they went from, you know, washing his feet with baby wipes to then, you know, doing it in a penthouse in Manhattan not even Manhattan maybe like Harlem because Harlem price points are now going up I'm pretty sure with the checks by now they can afford Harlem they will never afford Upper East Side that's for damn sure um other than that I am definitely just trying to think of of ways to be encouraging shows that I think really reflect like the full depth of the human spirit um Hell, BT, the quad is actually good. I'm actually happy with the quad. I was like, okay, good job. And even though, yes, you have, you know, the girl that's kind of, you know, wilding out. That was college. Everybody knew the wild out girl. Everybody knew the band girl. Everybody knew, you know, the civics leader girl. Everybody knew the jock. Like, that show to me is actually well-rounded. But all this other bullshit on TV that has women out here looking crazy and divisive and just you know, lost little lambs, that I'm not here for none of that mess. So tonight's video was very short and sweet and to the point. Call it a, a hood PSA for all of us to, you know, just get it together. As you can see in the background, I did my wonderful collage of all the African Americans that inspire me, that I love and care about. Mmm, so happy. Um, and if anyone has any questions, comments, and concerns, feel free, as usual, to say it down below. I think, I'm not sure, but I think as of tonight, I am at my 500 subscriber from, so for the, uh, uh, tongue tie, can't even say it right, but from the bottom of my heart, right behind these double Ds, let me just say how happy I am that I have this opportunity and this platform. I am so very appreciative for everyone who's wanted to collaborate with me. 
has wanted to help me with the development of this. I'm not going to lie. I have the new camera. I have just been lazy as shit setting this thing up. I'm going to do better. I'm not going to be trash my entire life. Or like Eddie Kane's daddy from the Five Heartbeats. I just want him to be better than me. Like, I'm going to get my life together, trust. Um, other than that, I hope everyone has a great evening. We have Survive Week 3, or coming up on Surviving Week 3 with Megatron. And look, y'all, we are going to make it. Shout out to Martin Luther King's daughter who wasn't here for none of his bullshit. She literally, y'all, gave us an entire step-by-step -step of how to treat him. And at best, the most I will be calling him is number 45th, like that hallowed civil rights child has told me to do. So I'm going to get in formation like a Beyonce song, and I'm going to give him this work. And also supporting uh, Lisa, the senator, who they tried to quiet. Nah, girl, we going to let you speak. Fuck Jeff Sessions. He does not deserve to be our attorney general. And I am not here for none of this BS. There's also a list going around. I need everyone to Google it. Um, in terms of senators that are op up for re-election for the midterm elections. If you follow Bernie Sanders on his Facebook page, you can specifically see it. Like if you're in Montana, Wyoming, Nebraska. And it also shows all the Republicans, all the Republicans who have voted to either get rid of affordable health care or who voted to uh, elect Betsy DeVos, a.k.a. Betty Rubble, into the Secretary of Education position. So if we really want to make change and elicit some action and say, hey guys, you work for us, buddy, then you need to call all of your family in those wonderful, wonderful Appalachian states and be like, not today. You're voting them out. Whew, that felt good. I knew I had something in my Shondo. Like I was like talking about them dumbass bras on reality TV wasn't going to get me going. But talking about some real stuff that's going on in our society, that'll get me worked up. Not when I got the ancestors behind here looking at me like, what are you going to do? Alrighty, so that being said, thank you for my 500 subscribers. I definitely appreciate you guys. And I will see you all later on in the week. Bye!